In this video, I show you how to build the Ox CNC router mill. So before we get started on the build, uh, this video is going to be dedicated on how to build the Ox Metal CNC router mill itself. If you'd like to know more about its features, or perhaps why you'd consider building one, then click the link up here which will take you to a brief video explaining features and so on. And also, if there are any future upgrades or add-ons that happen for the Ox Metal, um, they will be uploaded to my channel of course, but I'll also include a host of links on the right hand side of the video here uh, when those videos do happen. And I'm not going to be doing a usual overview and breakdown of all the parts used here because there's simply just way too many to list. However, if you are interested in all the components that go into this build, there will be a link to an open builds form post, which is going to have a detailed breakdown of all the parts and where you can purchase them so that you can easily acquire them yourself if you do want to build the Ox Metal Router for yourself. So, without further ado, let's get into the build. So, what I have here is our 20 by 40 by 744 millimeter long V slot. Now you can see in this one I've already gone ahead and drilled the necessary holes in it. So I'll put that aside and demonstrate on this one how we measure it. So measuring from the end we're going to put a mark at the 80mm point and 130mm point and then measure across. Obviously this is 40mm wide so 20mm is the centre and do that for both ends and we're going to drill out these four holes with a 5.5 millimeter drill bit. So some of the holes at the ends of this V slot do need to be threaded for M5. So let's take this short piece of 20 by 60 used on the Z axis. So I've used of course a standard M5 taper tap to thread all these and you can see there's three holes here three at each end of course, and every single hole needs to be threaded. Moving on we've got our 20 by 60, this is, we've got two lengths of this, and every single hole needs to be threaded. This is our 20 by 40, this is also 750 long, every single hole needs to be threaded both ends of course. Uh, we've got two lengths of 20 by 40 by 744. None of the holes need to be threaded on that. And lastly, we've got our 20 by 80. Now with the 20 by 80, we only need to thread two holes each end. I've threaded these two right here. And when you're threading the other end, make sure that they're on the same side. We don't want it flipped or mirrored on the other end. So before we can assemble our X carriage, we do have to drill a couple of holes in each of our X carriage plates. And the easiest way I've found to mark these holes out uh, is to take your X carriage uh, lead screw block mount. Uh, the only thing I've done is gone ahead and pre-installed two M5 nylocks in here. Slide it on to your X carriage plate. Center it. And while holding it in position with a marker, just mark the positions of the two holes you'll have to drill. Drill those out, rinse and repeat for the second plate, making sure that you drill them on the right side, uh, because there is a top and bottom to this plate. Um, the bottom of the plate is um, marked with these two larger holes for the eccentric spaces, and you've got two narrow holes up here just for the M5 bolts. Alright, so now we can start assembling our X carriage. And the first thing I'm going to do is to take this plate here and we're going to install the spacer blocks. Now, there's two sets of screw holes here. Uh, we're going to be using the widest set because we're going to be using the 20 by 60 V slot for the X axis. And I'm going to be using low profile. M5 by 15 millimeter screws to secure these blocks to the X carriage plate. So next up we're going to install our V wheels on the front here 
So I'm going to take these M5 low profile cap screws. These are 45 millimeters long. We need six of them. And next I'm going to take three eccentric spacers and we can place these on either side, doesn't matter. And I'm also going to take three quarter inch spacers. I'm going to place a precision, one millimeter precision shim onto all of the cap screws. And of course, next would be our V wheels. And then lastly, we're going to finish the deal off with some M5 nylocks. So when you're tightening up any bolts with V-wheels, we don't want to over-tighten them so that when we turn the wheel, we can feel that they're stiff. So that at that point, we're starting to put too much pressure on the bearings. They're not necessarily free wheel for hours on end, but they just shouldn't feel really stiff and crushed. Um, now, when it comes to adjusting our eccentric spaces, uh, I hope you can see that one side actually has a line uh, chiseled into the side of it. Now, that indicates um, that the where the cam lobe is on this eccentric spacer, and if that doesn't make sense, that's okay because basically we have to have all the lines facing out this way, and that means that the wheels are spaced furthest apart. So I'm going to take a 10 millimeter open end spanner. I'm going to turn the eccentric spaces until all the lines are facing out. And then we're going to come along with our 20 by 60 V slot and install it. And right now you can see absolute oodles of play right there. No good to us at all. So now we're going to start cranking on the eccentric spaces until the wheels start to make contact with the V slot. Now, you might be wondering, well, how, how hard or how tight do I have to have the wheels up against the V-slot? That's a good question. It's not easy to explain, but essentially, we want the wheel making contact, and we're still able to make the wheel slip. So if I hold the V-slot right here, I can still turn this without too much force and make it slip. Uh, however, we don't want any slop, so I'm going to try and twist the V-slot and if there's any movement then I need to tighten the uh, wheels up against the V-slot but that's just fine for the moment. So next up we can assemble our two X-carriage plates together and I'm going to start off by using these cap screws, these are M5 of course and these are 65 millimeters long And on the two bottom cap screws here, we're going to install eccentric spacers. And on the top two, we're going to put quarter inch spacers. And then a one millimeter shim for each. And then install our V wheels. Now we need nine millimeters of spacing between this wheel and the next wheel. Now I couldn't find any nine mil spacers um, on any open build website or similar that I could find, so I ended up purchasing uh, six and three millimeter spacers to make up the nine millimeter spacer. Um, but if you can find nine mil spacers, go right on ahead and buy those. So I'll put my nine millimeters of spacing on each of those cap screws and then a second set of V-wheels. Then we need another round of one millimeter shims. And on the top we need our two quarter inch spacers and then of course on the bottom two we need uh, our eccentric spacers. Put on our plate, everything's fitted together nicely. 
and then we'll finish it off with some M5 Nylox, of course. So I've just finished tightening up all those um, bolts, and now we're going to adjust our eccentric spaces. So we've got our eccentric spaces on the bottom here, and uh, of course this takes um, V slot that's 20 by 60. So I'm just going to use our short piece we're going to use on our Z axis for the time being to adjust the wheels. Same deal as before. Now we can install our lead screw block. And this gets installed right on the front here where these two holes are. And you can access the back through this cutout. And we're going to be using low profile M5 by 15 cap screws. So with everything tightened down, uh, we can move on to installing our 3D printed uh, lead screw block mount for the X carriage. Um, make sure though before we install it that you do have your M5 nylock uh, nuts installed in there. And I'm going to be using low profile M5 15mm cap screws to install this. And then with those cap screws tightened up, we can install our uh, y, uh, sorry, x-axis lead screw block and I'm going to be using 20mm M5 low profile cap screws and they thread into the nuts on the other side of this 3D printed mount. So next up we're going to be assembling our z-axis NEMA motor assembly. Now I've got my short uh, 20 by 60 V slot for the Z axis here and I've gone ahead and put on one of these NEMA motor mounts and I've just loosely fitted it with some M5 low profile 15mm cap screws. Um, now when you're installing these plates, and there's two of them, uh, one side you can see has a recess to fit these bearings into. Now we're going to install them so that, like this so that the bearings are facing each other so make sure you've got these orientated right when installing them. Um, I've already gone ahead and pre-installed my Flexi Z coupler on my NEMA motor and I'm going to be using M5 by 60 millimeter. what was it 60? No, 50 millimeter. M5 by 50 millimeter cap screws and 35 millimeter spacers. And then we're going to install this onto our NEMA motor mount. Right, so now we can assemble our Z axis assembly with our X carriage. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my short piece of Acme lead screw for the Z axis and screw it through the Z axis block. And we've got locking collars and bearings. So first I'm going to install a locking collar, then a bearing. Same on the other end, locking collar, then a bearing. Now I'm going to slide on my Z axis motor assembly and then install the right way around the NEMA motor mount at the other end of the V slot. Right, so this is going to be a bit tricky to get everything on camera, but I'm going to remember we've left this plate loose and I'm going to try and push the lead screw into the Z coupler like that and I'm going to tighten up the coupler and with that coupler tight we're going to slide in the bearing which is again very tricky to get on camera and then I'm going to slide my locking collar up to the bearing and tighten the locking collar next so you can see here we've got our bearing down in here and then our locking collar sits behind the bearing so I'm going to slide down my bearing, make sure it sits in the recess for the bearing, and then slide down the locking collar in front of that. And we're going to want to make sure that everything's got a bit of tension on it. We don't want this um, axis slopping around because, man, we're going to get some pretty hideous cuts if we do. And don't forget we have to tighten the um, cap screws at both ends because we left them loose for adjustment. So I'm going to be using this Makita quarter inch router 
with a 65mm base um, as my spindle on my CNC machine. Now the model number on this if you are curious is RT0700C, it's a 700 watt uh, motor and I'm going to be using this 3D printed mount to mount it to the Z-axis V-slot. Now I'm aware that there is a huge plethora of options for spindles and indeed routers that you could mount to the CNC machine but if you are using this very router or a router with another 65mm base then chances are you can use this mount of printed. If not, if you're using something different then you might have to use your own initiative to come up with some mounting solution for it. But I'll show you what I'm going to be doing at least. So I've got uh, three T-nuts installed on each side here and I'm going to be using 8mm low profile cap screws and these get installed through the mount of course into those T-nuts and then I've got these hose clamps and I've just 3D printed uh, sort of a cover for it so that it doesn't scratch up the router and these feed through the base and I'm not going to permanently mount my router at the moment because it's going to be a bit annoying getting in the way but I'll give you the general idea of how everything works you come along, you tighten up your hose clamps and that is rigidly mounted to the z-axis alright so now we can install the v-wheels on our gantry plates and as you can see I've pre-installed the three eccentric spaces on the bottom of my gantry plate and we're going to be using M5 by 30 cap screws low profile cap screws at that for our v-wheels So, same as before, on the cap screws that don't have eccentric spaces, install quarter inch spaces, and then a one millimeter precision shim on all. Then our V wheels. And then we're gonna finish it off with of course M5 nylocks. So next up is our gantry plates. Now I have made a modification to them. Uh, I've added these two holes here. These are drilled and tapped for M5 thread. Now one measurement I'll, I'll give you and the other one you'll have to figure out. So uh, the measurement between the center of the bolt and the outside here is 24 millimeters and the only direction you'll have to figure out, or the measurement rather, is in this direction. So centre of the bolt to the outside here. Now why I'm not just going to give you the dimensions I've used here is if there's a revision or a change or maybe these were cut slightly different so that the outside dimensions are different to your gantry plate then this measurement's going to be thrown off and no good to you. So. I'll put this aside for the moment and here's a gantry plate I've already got assembled with my 20 by 80 V slot now basically we have a 3D printed spacer which goes on the gantry plate here um, but essentially we have our T-nut for our lead screw that bolts on to these two bolt holes with the 3D printed spacer later now the the uh, lead screw lines up perfectly, it follows this channel right here. So if, when you t if you take measurements to figure out the center of this block is obviously tapped for the lead screw and, it, and the, as I said the lead screw follows this slot perfectly right here centered. With those two measurements you can figure out which way you need to place these two screw holes. So now I'm going to mount my hardware for the X carriage motor and also the Acme lead screw and I have printed two mounts and these mount a 8 by 16 by 5 millimeter bearing inside of them and at this point you can choose whether you install the X carriage motor on the left or the right side of the machine 
um, for me it's not going to make any difference. So, first I'm going to install one of these bearing carriers on one of the gantry plates. And to do that I'm going to be using 15mm low profile cap screws. I'm going to leave these cap screws just loose enough that I can still move the plate um, back and forth in the uh, NEMA motor slots because we are going to have to do some adjustment later on to line up the Acme lead screw. So, I'm going to set that aside for the moment and we'll focus on our next one. This one's going to be a bit trickier to install a lot more hardware. So I'm using 55mm low profile cap screws. I'll see if this works out flipping it over and laying it on the bench. And of course we're going to be installing another bearing carrier. All right. And then we're going to be using 35mm spacers. This is where it's going to get tricky. So I'm going to install the motor onto the cap screws with the spacers. So after a bit of arguing getting all the nuts and bolts on, um, I've just left them pretty close to being tight but loose enough that I can still move this motor back and forth to align it with the uh, X carriage Acme lead screw. So next up we're going to start assembling our gantry together and we're going to take our two 20 by 60 V slots that are 750mm long and also our 20 by 40 also 750 long. We're going to be using low profile M5 15mm long cap screws for this. So I'm going to start by bolting on one of the 20 by 60s and then the second 20 by 60 gets installed right adjacent to the previous one. So now is the time where we can slide on our z-axis assembly like that and then I start bolting on the second gantry plate at the other end of course Right, so I've just flipped this around so you can get a better look at the back. So the 20 by 40 gets installed just behind the 20 by 60. And this helps strengthen and make sure everything's true and square, but also gives us a great place to route some of our cables as well. Oh, I should mention before I forget, because I almost forgot myself, you're going to want to take a T-nut and slide it into the 20 by 60 V slot on the top. We'll see what that's for later. So now we can take our Acme lead screw for the X-axis. I'm going to start feeding it in through the side here. And before I start feeding it through the uh, lead screw block we've got here on the bottom of the X carriage. I'm going to slide on a locking collar and then I'm going to start feeding this through the lead screw block. And this is where um, the two uh, flanges which hold the bearings each end, that's why we leave them, leave them loose so that we can adjust this back and forth like this until everything is nice and lined up. And before we start passing the lead screw into the uh, second flange where we've got the motor mounted this side, I'm just going to pass on another locking collar. So how I'm going to make sure that I don't bend the uh, Acme lead screw because the flanges each end are misaligned, I'm just going to use a ruler. I'm going to measure 
the distance between um, the 20 by 60 V slot here and the uh, Acme lead screw and make sure that it's parallel both ends and I'm going to make adjustments where needed. So with a little bit of fiddle I've got everything lined up so now I'm going to go ahead and start tightening down these cap screws to lock everything in place. Right so I've got both flanges at both ends locked down, tightened down and I've used a ruler the whole way along to make sure that the Acme lead screw is parallel and we're not bending it in or out and now I can push the uh, Acme lead screw all the way up, in fact I'll move it over so you get a better look so I'm going to make sure that the Acme lead screw is pushed as far into the Z coupler here as I can and then I'm going to tighten down the grub screw and it's time to install our locking collars while we're at it. So these get pushed right up against the bearing as hard as they can and I do believe that is our gantry plates and X Z axis assembled. So now we can move on to assembling the Y axis and the bed frame. Um, so remember we got two threaded holes each end of the 20 by 80 now those want to be pointing down, they want to be the lowest position when we install them, so I'm going to thread this through our gantries and now we want to take our 20 by 40s and these are 744 millimeters long so the first thing we should do is sit the 20 by 40 underneath the 20 by 80 here and we're going to be using T-nuts now one side has a flange one side is flat we're going to want the flange to be facing out this way it gives more threads uh, for the 8mm low profile cap screws to mount into and I'm going to install three of these Well, I went full retard and forgot to add some T-nuts. It's much later in the build, and I've only just realized it. So before you install the gussets, we need to install um, six T-nuts like this, and then we can install our gusset. So we need two T-nuts in the first three slots from the top of our 20 by 80, and this needs to happen in each of the corners. Right, so I've just done those up tight enough that they've got some threads but I uh, can still slide this along and then we're going to take two 15 millimeter cap screws and these get threaded into the 80 by 20 and I'm going to leave everything loose because I'm going to do this to all four corners and then I'm going to use a square on the inside of the frame here and make sure that my uh, frame is true and square then I can come back and tighten all these down so I've just finished up screwing the frame and then tightening up the cap screws in the corners um, and I'm going to be installing two lengths of timber on the bed to help strengthen and give me something to screw down the, uh, the bed as well um, so the wood gets secured with these two holes we drilled earlier and I'm just using stainless wood screws um, let's see how long these are these are about 45 millimeters long. Um, now I'm going to be using J-frame rather than solid timber. The reason is that is J-frame's uh, laminated much like plywood is, and the measurements are 1120 long, 90 millimeters wide, and 40 millimeters thick to match the V-slot here. So I've got them all screwed in, and now I'm just going to put the last screw in, and then we can slap on the plywood bed. Now I'm using this sheet of plywood as the bed for my CNC machine. It's made from 18mm plywood and it's got a grid of M8 T-nuts on it. Now these two rows along here and these two rows along here are countersunk below the surface of the plywood so that when the plywood's placed on top of the J-frame here uh, it doesn't stand the plywood proud of the surface. Um, I won't go into detail of all the dimensions and spacing because I'll draw up a diagram and leave a link down in the video's description so you can replicate this yourself if you do so desire.
So on the front cross member here, you can see we've got uh, holes all the way along. Now these are drilled and tapped for M5 thread and they match these front row of holes here on the, on the plywood. So what I've done is gone ahead and pre-drilled the holes in the plywood. I've then fitted it down onto the framework of the CNC machine, uh, marked out where the holes are, removed the plywood, threaded them and drilled them for M5 and at this point now I can go ahead and reinstall the plywood and secure it down. So I've marked out two lines. Uh, they measured 85 millimeters out from the side of the 20 by 80 and they go the entire length and I'm using 40 millimeter wood screws and that secures the 18mm plywood down to the J-frame beneath it. And I've just added a handful along each side. So this part is optional but I suppose I'd recommend it. Um, I'm going to use a waste board on here. It's 5mm MDF and it just sits on top of the 18mm uh, plywood and basically all it does is it gives us a surface where we can cut all the way through our metal or wood, whatever we're cutting on our CNC mill and if we scratch all this up or rather route grooves all in it, once it gets too messy we can just pull it off, throw it away, put a new one down and we haven't damaged our 18mm uh, plywood underneath. So I've got my plywood and my 5mm sheet of MDF on top and we're going to use 45mm low profile cap screws and they thread into the holes that we drilled and tapped earlier into our 20 by 40 cross member here. So in this view we're looking down at the bed of the machine and this V-slot here is the 20 by 80 on the y-axis, the, the V-slot that the gantry slides along. And if we look down here at this uh, gap here, we can see that if I try and pull the 20 by 80, I'm opening up a gap there. Now we don't want that, we want these axes as rigid as we can get them. So now we're looking at the side of the machine. So as you can see here, I've drilled a hole. Now I've put three holes on each side of the 20 by 80s here, and they're spaced center to center, measuring from the end 290 mils each. And I'm gonna use a couple of pan head screws. Uh, I have had to um, machine down the, the heads on them just a little bit, uh, just using an old method of putting them in a drill chuck and uh, using a bench grinder to um, make them a little bit smaller so that they'll pass through the V-slot here. But uh, essentially this is all we've got to do. It should significantly stiffen up our Y-axis. So next up I'm going to be bolting on my NEMA motor onto our Y-axis mount. So this mount has a 688 RS bearing installed on the front of it, do that first. And before we dump the motor just onto the mount, uh, we should first take into consideration what direction would be best for our wires to stick out. So for me, it's probably going to be this direction. And then we're going to be using uh, 20 millimeter cap screws to install the motor. So now we can go ahead and install our Y-axis NEMA motor onto our bed frame here. So for the time being, leave off the, um, the coupler because otherwise it's going to interfere with us installing the cap screws. And this motor mount mounts to the six uh, T-nuts we installed earlier with 15 millimeter cap screws. So we've got our NEMA motor at one end of the lead screw for the Y-axis, but this goes on the other end and it has a 688 RS bearing. Um, we want the bearing to be facing that way towards the other end of the machine and we're going to be using 15mm cap screws and this is where our six T-nuts we installed later on they line up with the six holes on the mount here. So next up we can install the um, lead screw block and the spacer for it and to do that M5 by 40 and then that it screws into these two holes we drilled and threaded earlier for M5.
and don't tighten these up because we want it to thread the lead screw through everything so that it, everything sort of self aligns and then we can come back and tighten these up. So now I can install our lead screw and before I thread it through the uh, block here I'm going to pass on a locking collar and I'll start threading this through and before it reaches the motor I'm going to put on another locking collar so we want to make sure that our lead screw is all the way into the Z coupler so make sure you push it all the way in until it bumps up against the motor shaft and I'm going to go ahead and tighten the coupler and then I'm going to go ahead and slide the locking collar right up to the bearing and also tighten it down so now we can slide our uh, y-axis mount back so that the uh, end of the rod is just flush with the back of the mount and then I can go ahead and tighten down these cap screws and now we can slide up our locking collar and I'm going to try and put a bit of force to put tension on this rod um, so that it's not loose between both mounts both this mount and the mount at the end with the NEMA motor on it so now we can turn our attention back to the lead screw block here and now we can come back and tighten up these two cap screws. So now we're working on the opposite side of the Y axis and it's same same only different of course. Um, one thing we're going to have on this side is a roller and this roller helps support the cable chain we're going to be installing later on. Now this has a couple of miniature bearings installed, I can't remember the code but as always they'll be in the build list. And we're going to have this mount which supports the roller so if you installed your x-axis motor on that side great news this will work if you install it on this side you'll have to print a mirrored image of this uh, otherwise the offset of these bolt holes here will be on the wrong side um, so we've got a bit of a sandwich effect going on here so we can get some installed like this and we're going to be using 65mm cap screws for this and before we install it make sure you put an M5 uh, nylock in the back of this mount here and then for the guide roller we've got a M5 by 55 and this gets installed like so and that screws into that nylock and again leave everything loose so that we can come back and tighten it up when our lead screw is installed. So next up I'm going to be installing the y-axis cable chain mount here and this gets installed where these four uh, cap screws normally are so I've just removed those and I'm going to put the mount back and reinstall those screws. So next up I'm installing the cable chain for the y-axis now this is listed as 15 by 20 millimeter size however that's not the outside that's the internal space so uh, watch out for that when purchasing it uh, this is 1200 millimeters long now the longest I could find on eBay was a meter so I had to buy two lengths and um, swap some links around from one to the other um, so now we've got some M5 nylocks these get installed beneath the mount and then I'm using some countersunk uh, cap screws and these are 15 millimeters long and now we've got to attach the opposite end of the cable chain now the easiest way I found was to drill a hole right here in the 3D printed mount and use a big old pan screw, I think this is about 6 millimeters in diameter um, to attach this end of the cable chain so now we can start working on the x-axis cable chain and you're going to want to print this mount and this has a M5 nylock installed on the top of it and then we're going to be installing this on the X carriage where the uh, NEMA motor would have been originally mounted in the design and um, we're going to secure this with uh, 15 millimeter cap screws. So remember back to when we installed this uh, T-nut on the 20 by 40 on the X carriage well that gets used now so we're going to be using a um, cap screw this is 8mm and it's countersunk and this installs our cable chain like so let's get that started 
and then I'm going to slide the cable chain right up to the uh, gantry plate here and then tighten this cap screw down. Now for my build I am using min and max limit switches. Now you're going to want to print one of these, this is for the Z axis. You're going to want to print two of these, this mounts for the X axis. And you're going to want to print two of these it's for the Y axis. So the micro switches I've used here measure uh, 9.8 millimeters center to center on the mounting holes. They've been drilled out to fit an M3 by 10 millimeter cap screw and the cap screw just threads into the plastic, holds it pretty firm. So now let's show you how they all mount. So we're looking at the Z-axis here. Now I went ahead and slid in two T-nuts, used low profile uh, 8 millimeter cap screws with washers and the great thing about this is all you have to do is undo that with an allen key and you can slide it anywhere on the track to position the stop or the, the activation for your micro switch. So this is our mount here, we've got the two switches on the back. This gets installed, there should be a pre-existing hole already in the um, X carriage plate here. So that gets bolted up with a 15mm cap screw and then you can just adjust these limit travels uh, wherever you need them. And this is our Y axis limit switch. So this gets installed on top of the track here. I'm just going to insert two T nuts. And then I'm going to use 8mm cap screws to screw the mount into place. And then you can slide this wherever you need it. Um, and you're going to need two of these, of course, as I mentioned earlier. So position the two wherever it is best and most convenient for wiring them in. So I've just gone ahead and removed the screw here which screws into the V-slot and this is the mount we use for the X-axis limit switch and it gets reinstalled with the screw back in there and don't forget we need one at each end on our gantry plate so do the same same on the other side. So at this point of the build really the next thing is to extend all the wires from the stepper motors and also the limit switches and route them to wherever you want to have your electronics that run all the stepper motors. Now I'm going to be mounting a box right on top of this stepper motor here which is going to house my um, stepper driver board. So uh, off camera I'm going to go ahead and extend all the wires and route everything to there. So let's take a moment to talk about electronics, specifically the stepper controller which is going to drive our CNC machine. Now I've chosen to use the CNC X-Pro V2 but there is no reason you couldn't go and choose something else like a grub shield with an Arduino or a gecko driver, whatever you like. Go do some research and find out, find out more information about them and find what works best for you. But why I chose the CNC X-Pro V2 is it has four dedicated stepper drivers on board and the fourth one can clone any of the other three. Out of the box it's set up to clone the Y axis which is perfect because we have two motors on the Y axis. We have limit switch inputs, we have uh, jumpers for our micro stepping and I believe out of the factory it's set up for eighth micro stepping. And we also have the option to add three micro switches to control cycle start resume, feed hold and reset abort. Um, we have two ways of powering this as well. We can have a 12 to 24 volt power input on this header here or we can use a power supply from a computer and plug it in on the board here. And of course this is our USB input. So I'm not going to go into boring detail of how this is wired to the stepper motors because really everything you need to know is on the wiki page for the CNC X Pro V2, it will tell you what all the headers do, um, and if that collaborated with um, your stepper motors, hopefully they came with some sort of paperwork to say what colour wire means what, you should be able to wire this in yourself fairly easily. So I've routed all the wires to this jiffy box, and I've got it mounted just above my stepper motor on the corner here. So uh, the box is nothing special, I just got it from my local hobby shops, much like this one here. Uh, comfortably fits my stepper driver and I've got a 40mm fan at this end and you can't really see it on the camera but uh, I've got a series of holes at this end 
uh, just to let a bit of air flow through because we do have to keep the driver board cool. Um, and I've terminated the connections of my stepper motors with uh, DuPont connectors because uh, they can plug straight into the CNC X Pro uh, without individually wiring them up to um, the terminal headers on the board. So you've got an option where you can just uh, put the bare wires straight into these headers or you can use the DuPont connector just above it. The handy thing if you do use the DuPont connectors is if you've got your stepper motor wired in the, going in the wrong direction, all you have to do is flip the DuPont connector around on the board and then it should be going in the right direction again. So I'm going to go ahead and install my uh, CNC X Pro board in here and come back when that's done. Now once you've got your driver board all installed along with wiring in the uh, stepper motors and the limit switches and everything else that goes along with it, uh, at least as far as the hardware side of things go, this build is complete. Now one thing we should get back on the topic of is uh, what sort of spindle we'll be using. So uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm using this Makita quarter inch relta for the spindle. Now you don't have to use this, you can use whatever motor you want um, and as long as you can bolt it to the z-axis v-slot you can pretty much use it. Um, a lot of stepper driver controller boards along with the CNC X Pro V2 does have support to turn on and off the spindle as well as speed control. Now I'm not going to be using that personally at the moment because I'd like to turn the spindle on and off manually and it has manual speed control right here on the router anyway. So really the last thing we need to do is look at software uh, both on the CNC X Pro and on your computer so that will be covered in another video. Uh, it will cover things like um, installing drivers, basic setting changes to the garble firmware, um, how to communicate with the um, X-Pro board from your computer, things like that. And if you want to check that out, there will be a link up in the video's corner here. And really the first thing I went ahead and did, once I had all the software installed, was zip tie a Sharpie or permanent marker to the Z-axis and then drew out the schematics logo right there. Very cool. So if you want to see how all that is done, do click on that link. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, hit that like button. It would be much appreciated. And also consider subscribing if you loved this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye for now.